Hey everybody, this is Franco and this is another video uh, as I'm working through my project of trying to add CNC spindle control to my Precision Matthews PM728 VT milling machine. So what we have here today is the addition of the KBSI-240D uh, I guess you call this a signal isolation board. I'm not really sure what what they call it, but it's a KBSI240D. And these things are readily available on eBay. This one is a, I guess, a, uh, a reconditioned one or a, a requalified one. It's not a brand new one. I've never actually purchased a brand new one. I've always bought used ones or requalified ones off of eBay. And uh, I've never had an issue with that. So, yeah, so let's talk about this here really quick. What do we have going on? The Centroid Acorn has this analog output connection on it, which is great. It provides a 0 to 10 volt uh, signal, and it's basically designed to work with like VFDs. So 0 would be stop, and 10 volts would be uh, full speed. And of course, in the the Centroid uh, CNC12 software and their setup wizard, you can you can def you can define all that. You can define uh, the maximum RPM for whatever your machine configuration is. So zero is stop or zero, you know, no RPM. Ten volts is full RPM. So if you've you know if you have a machine that's designed to go uh, five thousand RPM maximum RPM the 10 volt uh, signal output would uh, represent the 5,000 RPM max. And then, uh, you know, five volts would be half of that, 2,500 RPM, and so on and so forth. So it's a very linear output, uh, very linear output coming out of the Centroid Acorn board. So zero to 10 volts, <clears throat> which is great if you're using a VFD. But uh, these machines, like the uh, Precision Matthews PM728VT, they do not use a uh, 0 to 10 volt signal. And it's, I, I want to say it's more like a 0 to 5 volt signal, but it's actually not, not exactly 5 volts, and we'll talk about that in a second. So you have to find a way to safely connect the acorn to these different uh, motor, motor control boards. And that's what this does. And I'll just throw this out there. There's another gentleman on YouTube. I think it's uh, Marty CNC Garage is his YouTube channel. He is much better with electronics than I am. And he's done several videos on the use of these boards. I would recommend that you go to his channel and check it out. Um, I came to find out about these boards from Marty, I believe. But there was also a very nice gentleman at some point in time who sent me this wiring diagram. Uh, it, it also shows the KBSI 240D. And uh, he's, an, he's another person who uh, provided some insight into these things. So what this does, this board, first of all, it protects your acorn board. It, it provides signal isolation. So you, um, you can't get like a... You, you don't want to have like a weird ground loop situation where somehow you, you fry your acorn board through this analog uh, signal, right? You don't want to do that. So this board will protect your acorn, but it also does something uh, very important. What it can do is change the voltage. So it accepts the 0 to 10 volts from the acorn, and you can scale it down to various different voltages. So I have it I have the voltage scaled down to be something compatible with the Precision Matthews machine. So how does this work? There's 10 connections, 10 screw terminals. I am configured to power this thing off 110 volts. And you can see what I have here. I have uh, screw terminals 1 and 2 as the neutral. And you can see they're jumpered together. Screw terminals 3 and 4 is the line. And they are jumpered together. And then screw terminals 5 and 6, you can see they're labeled, terminals 5 and 6. 5 goes to the uh, common side of the analog output, that's the black wire. And then 
uh, 6, the brown wire, goes to the uh, V out side of the analog output. Right? So you can, can see what we have going on there. 5 and 6. 5 is common. 6 is V out connects to the analog output of the acorn. And then finally, connections 9 and 10, those are your voltage outputs that you're going to you're going to use to replace the potentiometer in whatever machine. And that's where I have my my multimeter connector right now cuz we're going to measure those voltages. Now, something else is very important. You want to make sure this is switched to voltage, not current mode, right? So you want to be in voltage mode. Uh, depending on the board you have, this might be a jumper. And then finally, the last thing that you need to know is there's two, two trim pots on here. One of the trim pots adjusts the minimum voltage. The other trim pot adjusts the maximum voltage. That's very important. So generally, you want the minimum voltage to be zero. The maximum voltage you need to adjust to make it something compatible with the machine that you're controlling. So that, that's a very important piece of this. So the, the min and max trim pots, you need to pay attention to those. So what you need to do is uh, you need to figure out the voltages that you're supposed to use. So what I did is I took my multimeter over to my Precision Matthews machine. And I know you can't see this, it's kind of dark, but very carefully... I put my uh, alligator clips on pin 7 and 8 here of the potentiometer. I hooked them up to my multimeter and then I slowly stepped through RPMs and I recorded it and uh, long story short, it, of course at stop at zero voltage and as I stepped through it when I got to, I'm going to call 4300 my max RPM at 4300 RPM, I had 4.69 volts. And I know my handwriting's really sloppy, so I apologize. It looks like chicken scratch, but uh, yeah. So zero is zero. Max RPM is going to be 4300 RPM, and the voltage there is 4.69 volts. So what I did is I adjusted the max uh, trim pot until the maximum voltage at uh, 4300 RPM was 4.69 volts. So my Centroid software was set from, uh, to have a max RPM of 4300 RPM. And uh, at, at 4300 RPM, I tr adjust this trim pot to where the voltmeter says 4.69 volts. So let's, uh, let's fire this thing up here. So what I did, I wrote a little program and all this program does is it just loops through some RPM, steps up at 100 RPM at a time, does a little dwell, and uh, then I can read the voltage. So let's, let's run this thing. All right. So there's 100 RPM. That's 200 RPM, 300 RPM, 400 RPM. 500 RPM, so on and so forth, right? So it's going to step through the different voltages uh, until it gets to its maximum RPM of 4300 RPM. And uh, then what I did is I, I recorded all these values. So I, I recorded the values on the motor controller on the Precision Matthews machine. And then I, I recorded the values coming out of the Acorn through the, the uh, KBSI 240D board. And uh, I, I can tell you this, the, the output coming out of the acorn is very linear, very linear output. And that's, that's exactly what you would expect. That's what it's supposed to do. I was concerned that the output coming out of the Precision Matthews machine might not be linear, or that it may not be linear. And the reason why I was worried about that is because the last time I did this was with this little motor controller and this little lathe. It was not a linear uh, relationship between voltage and RPM on this machine. So I was concerned that the, the Precision Matthews may not be. But what I found was that it actually is. And what I have here is a plot of the two series of points. So the, the, 
the blue values are the uh, acorn and the orange values are the precision Matthews. And what you can see is they are tracking very close to each other. So I was very happy to see that the way the motor controller on the Precision Matthews works, it's, it's very linear. And that's perfect. That's exactly what you want to interface the Acorn with the Precision Matthews. So I, am, I, am, uh, f I fully expect that when I get these things connected, that when I command a given, voltage, or a given RPM, I'm going to see, uh, if, if not the exact RPM, something that's very close uh, to what I've commanded on the uh, actual spindle. So that's all very encouraging, and all of that has gone great. And you know what? Let's just, let's just fire off an MDI command here so you can see that. Let's go into MDI. Uh, yeah, MDI M3 speed 4300 my screen is dirty okay let me use my mouse um, okay there we go so you can see at 4300 rpm I am getting 4.7 volts which is exactly you know 4.69 4.7 volts that's ex exactly what I want so all that's great. Everything's great. And um, I, was actually, <laughs> I was actually going to run a big long wire from my uh, KVSI 240D board over to my milling machine here and hook this stuff up and give you a little sample of how this works. But I pulled a real bonehead maneuver and I'm going to mention it just as a cautionary note for all of you guys as you're working on these machines. So I had my alligator clips on connection seven and eight, and I was super careful to make sure I didn't short them out against this metal you know, plate they're mounted to, right? Um, I had my little, uh, I had some plastic thing laying here that I was using to rest my wires on. I accidentally dropped one of the wires and it touched this table, and I left all the smoke out of the the motor control board when I did that. It, it popped. It was pretty spectacular. Uh, tripped the breaker and I ruined that board. So now I'm going to have to get a new motor control board for my Precision Matthews milling machine. I'm sure uh, those guys keep spare parts. So I don't think it'll take too long to get it, but I feel pretty dumb. And uh, so don't be dumb like me when you're working with this stuff. Be super, super vigilant that you don't short anything out <laughs> don't don't brush your wires up against the machine you will uh you will fry things uh, and um if uh, and you potentially could shock yourself which would be terrible right so yeah so stay tuned we'll get that fixed and uh gonna try to get this thing hooked up so hopefully that was interesting and um if you're looking to do this, I highly recommend that uh, you pick yourself up one of these KBSI 240D boards. Maybe uh, go over to Marty's CNC Garage and watch some of his videos so you can see somebody that actually knows what they're doing with electronics and see how they work. And um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Be safe and have a great day.